Welcome to area of a polar region. Um, so this is a little different from how we've done area before. Instead of area under a curve, um, we'll kind of be looking at sectors from the origin. So the idea here is if we have a polar curve, oops, not a polar curve, a polar curve, So say um, we have uh, our origin of our polar curve or of our, and the um, theta equals zero line. And um, let's just do a basic circle. Okay. What we can do is we can find the area between angles. So we'll have our angle theta one and theta two. Um, we can find the area between angles. Uh, so between the angles theta one, and theta two. So essentially we're viewing, uh, remember that our um, theta equals theta one is just the line through the origin. Um, and so, and theta equals theta two is a line through an origin. So we're essentially viewing um, the region trapped between our curve and the two lines uh, for those specific angles. Right. Um, so in this case, if it's a circle, it's a, just a sector of the circle. So if we're working with a circle, um, then the region is just the sector of a circle. And when we go to find the area of that sector, it's the fraction of the circle that we have times the area, which is pi r squared, right? And the fraction we have, the entire one loop around the circle would be two pi, right? And the fraction of that that we have is uh, theta two minus theta one is the distance in radians out of the total two pi around the circle. So this is our, the fraction of the circle is this theta two minus theta one over two pi. And then we're multiplying by the area of the circle, pi r squared. So this just becomes uh, theta two minus theta one over two times r squared if we simplify. So if we think of any curve, not necessarily a circle, if we don't have a circle, then what we do is we break it into teeny slivers, which are like small slivers of a circle. So if we don't have a circle, then we break into uh, small slivers of a circle. or small sectors of circles. So 
again, let's say now we don't have a circle, it starts out wide and comes closer in whatever shape we have. Right? If we're piecing between um, two angles, theta one and theta two, right? we could break this up into many smaller pieces. And then view each of those as pieces of circles. Right? And so we have sort of our radius for each section. And then we also have our sort of change in angle. And so we can kind of build our area as a sum of these little regions. So again, um, each small sector uh, has area approximately equal to uh, the change in theta. So that would be delta theta, our change in theta, over two times r squared uh, for some r is some radius in that little interval, right? So for some theta in the interval. And of course, as we let delta theta go to zero, so as delta theta goes to zero, we wind up getting our D of our area, our sliver of area is just equal to one half times R squared times D theta. So we can put this together then, piecing together all these little slivers. That we get that um, the area Uh, of a polar curve or of a polar region between theta equals theta one and theta equals theta two is given by, we simply add up all these slivers that becomes our definite interval. So the area is equal for the definite interval from theta one to theta two of, we have one half r squared d theta, or in other words, we can pull that one half out. We have one half times the definite interval from theta one to theta two of r squared d theta. So again, the pi's canceled out when we did our fraction, our change in theta over out of the total two pi, and then multiplied by our pi r squared, those pi's canceled out. That change in theta is now just our d theta. Um, and so this is coming from taking the area of a sector of a circle. So let's go ahead and do a quick example. Let's find the area of the inner loop of r equals four cosine theta plus one. So r equals four cosine theta plus one uh, looks like a little loop inside of a loop. Um, and so the first thing we have, essentially what we wanna find we're asked for the area of the inner loop. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what values of theta correspond to, or what interval of theta corresponds to that inner loop. So our first step is to determine uh, the values of theta
that correspond to the inner loop. So this happens in particular um, when um, we're passing through what we would usually call the origin. Right? So this happens when r equals zero. So the start and end of our loop are when r equals zero. So note the start and end. occur when r equals zero. So we plug in r equals zero is equal to four cosine of theta plus one. So this means that um, cosine of theta is equal to negative uh, one fourth. So we are looking for uh, theta equaling um, inverse cosine of negative one fourth, right, which is not one of our usual um, values. So it's not going to be necessarily pretty. Right, um, it's going to give us a decimal approximation. So if we find this decimal approximation of cosine inverse or inverse cosine of negative one fourth, we get uh, 1.82 approximately. One point eight two three, etc. This is our first theta value. This is the start. Theta two is um, the um, sort of mirror image down uh, in the third quadrant. So theta two will occur in that third quadrant um, value. Um, when it comes to co finding values of cosine that give a particular value, the way to find the second is simply to do, uh, for its reflection about the x-axis, you do 2 pi minus theta 1 to find the second location. Again, to do reflection about the x-axis, the angle uh, in the positive direction gives you the top, and then the angle below gives you the bottom value. So we have 2 pi minus theta 1, uh, which is approximately 4.4597, etc. So those are our two boundaries. And so these are our boundaries for our definite integral. Once you have those, we have that the area is equal to the definite interval from 1.823, etc., to 4.459, etc. Of, sorry, we should have a one half up front. The area is equal to one half of the definite integral from theta one to theta two of um, r squared d theta. So our r is four cosine theta plus one. So we have four cosine of theta plus one 
that whole thing squared, and then d theta. Um, though this is equivalent, if we're being precise, this is one half times a definite integral from cosine inverse of one fourth to two pi minus cosine inverse of one fourth. All time, and then of of or cosine theta plus one, whole thing squared d theta. So you could go ahead and evaluate this. I'm going to go ahead and just enter this into decimals. So if we enter this into decimals, we wind up getting uh, uh, 6.053 as our integral. So here, notice I have entered at a equals cosine inverse of negative one fourth. That was our first value, our lower bound. I have entered b equals two pi minus cosine inverse. That's our upper bound. This way I can get the precise area. Um, our area is then one half, the definite integral from a to b of four cosine theta plus one, the whole thing squared, d theta. So we can enter this precisely in, uh, into decimals and do the calculations there. Um, at this point, while you, you could evaluate the integral by hand, we certainly know how to evaluate the integral by hand. Um, you are welcome to use a program like Desmos to do these calculations for you. Uh, once again, we got that our area is approximately six point. 05 uh, for the area of that region, of that inner loop. Um, so again, this is a useful setup we have for determining area if we're in polar coordinates. We do not need to convert to rectangular coordinates. And we're solving for a slightly different uh, area than we're used to. We're essentially letting our angle sweep around and solving between uh, the area between two lines going straight through our board. Okay. So, and then here is what I had typed into Desmos to do the calculations for me. So this is area of a polar region. <laughs>